Thank you, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd, I'd love to thank the TED folks for inviting to, me to speak here today. Um, back, I think it was back in April when they asked me to speak, I said, sure, I, I've spoken about a lot of things before, and I, I guess the gravity of the situation uh, didn't hit me um, <laughs> until I, I, I got my guidelines. Um, and I got to tell you, if you've never given a TED talk, the guidelines are absolutely terrifying. Uh, <laughs> they say things to you like, be passionate. <laughs> give the best speech of your life. Come on. The, and then on top of it, they got this guy sitting over here. Look, it's 1726. I got 18 minutes, all right? Uh, <laughs> so, so this is, you know, this is a monumental day for me, and I am just so pleased to be here. And, and the power of everyone really set me to thinking. Do I talk about international collaborations? Do I talk about what we do at school? Do we talk about students? Do we talk about teachers? And finally, one day, it came to me. And it came to me when I looked at this plaque on the front of my office, which is not moving. Boy, the timing was great, but the thing is not working here. So let's just see. There we go. This plaque is on, is on the uh, uh, front of my office. And I want to make a little dedication here. I want to dedicate this talk to my mother-in-law. Uh, Bobby Ionello is currently fighting cancer up in Rochester, New York. And it is the battle of her life. And, and she has fought many battles over the course of her life. She brought up my brothers-in-law, OK? And that was a battle. Uh, she brought up my wife and her sister. Um, but you know, this plaque that she gave me 20 years ago, she gave to me kind of to honor me. Um, because this is something I've always said. I teach because I care. But I realized when I looked at this plaque the other day as I was finalizing this speech that this was not about me. This is about everyone. Because everyone teaches and everyone cares. And it dawned on me that this plaque is as much to honor the people who bring up children, who are managers, who are administrators, who are doctors, who are lawyers, because they all teach. And it led me to today's theme. So this is dedicated to her. So you got to give a speech with passion. Hmm? So I thought I better look up the word passion. Um, and so, you know, and we all have our connotations of what passion means. But this says it all. Because as I look to my passions, what are those intense, driving, overmastering feelings of convictions I have? What do I have ardent affection for? What do I have a strong liking or desire for? And I thought of fishing. <laughs> and, and I thought of my children. And I thought of Jimmy Buffett and the Buffalo Bills. And I didn't think you wanted to hear about any of those things. So I really had to search. And I, no, I didn't really have to search. That's a lie. I knew immediately what I would be talking about. I knew that I would be talking about teaching. Because you know what? We have a central dogma in biology. DNA makes RNA, RNA makes protein. That's nice. But the central dogma of humanity, uh, the central dogma for human beings, is that everyone wants to make a difference. Everyone wants to make a difference. Have you ever met anyone? I and mean, try it. Walk up to somebody and say, would you like to make a difference? Nobody will say no. Everyone wants to make a difference. And so, so how? The real question now is, how do we make a difference? How can we, as individuals, tap into the power of everyone and truly, truly make a difference? Because I believe we all do. So, you know, I, I, I thought of some people who have made differences. And there's some pictures, and I would like you to, we're going to do a little game playing today. And one of the things is I want you to insert your face here. Um, and, and you recognize all those people. I had to throw Sonia Sotomayor in there because I went to high school with her. Um, I, I didn't realize it at the time, and she didn't know me. Um, but I'm sure that story is going to morph over the years that she had a crush on me. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, but for now, we went to high school together. But these are people who have made a difference. And why have they made a difference? They made a difference because they were passionate about something. And they realized something, that everyone starts not with the word every, but with, it actually ends with the word one, and that is the most important part of every one. You see, to be, to tap into the power of everyone, 
you need to be the one. You need to be the one that wants to make that difference and knows how. And I submit to you that all of you in this room can make that difference, can be that one, if you simply take on the role of being a teacher. You see, because every one of you at some time teaches. Every single person on this planet at one time will be a teacher, multiple times. And so I thought to myself, gee, how can I, in this talk, help people make a difference? And it, then it became obvious. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to play a little game today. And, and I want to go to my lessons learned that I have learned through my career as a teacher. And so for me, I realized, like, like everyone else, that teaching extended from my classroom and it extended into my parenting, and it extended into my management, and it extends into everything. For me, the lessons I learned were that great teachers, great teaching, comes down to being a great person. We needed to look at ourselves, we need to look at ourselves so that we can be that one, that one that makes a difference. So, like my mother-in-law, like my mother, like all of you, we can make a difference by being that one outside of the classroom. So how do we do that? So here's the game we're going to play. I'm going to pretend that I'm speaking to a, a commencement at a teacher's college. All of you are st students who are just graduating and are going on to become teachers. And I'm going to give you 10 bits of advice that George has learned over his 60 years of life. <laughs> you, on the other hand, are going to put yourselves in that role. But you're allowed to change one thing. When I say the word teacher, you can plug in any word you want. Parent, manager, TRT, um, anything you want. Because to me, as you progress through, as we progress together through our lives, it is when we teach that we make the greatest difference. So what are my, what are my 10 tips? So let's start out with the very first one. There is no more important job that you can take on than teaching. It is the single most important thing we do. Where would we be without teachers? Where would we be if we did not have the ability to share our expertise, whatever that may be, with other people? And the second point is this. You have taken on this task with, with the zeal of a missionary. You must take on this task. Why did you take on this task? Why did you take on this task of teaching? Why did you take on this, are you changing the name? Did you change teaching to parenting? Because it works, okay? Why did you take on this task? You must have the zeal of a missionary. If you do not have the zeal of a missionary, you will want material, you will want material benefits, you will want to get rich, but you need to find satisfaction in your actions and you need to find satisfaction in your results. That will make you a great teacher. The third thing I want to tell you is not to let the naysayers get you down. No matter what they say to you, you're going to be wrong. I used to do a TV show on, homework, uh, on, on PBS called Homework Hotline. And it was live TV. Kids would call in and get help with homework. And I'd walk into Wegmans. We had Wegmans in Rochester. Actually, that's where they started. Um, and uh, I used to walk into the grocery store, and these People would walk up to me and they'd say, why did you do that third grade call like this? You could have used a formula. Said, Sir, this is a third grader, you know? <laughs> I go, Come on. I get a... so, so don't let the naysayers get you down. Don't forget why you entered this career. Don't forget why you did the things you did and uh, the things you do. The fourth thing is, how do you deal with these people? What's your greatest tool? Your greatest tool is a teacher is a smile. It is your greatest tool. You know, think about smiling. Primates smile all the time to show trust. We're primates, by the way, okay? Um, primates smile all the time to show trust. So, so, and let's get to the next point. Trust. Give them your trust. There is no more important thing for a teacher to give to their student than the tool of a smile and the commitment of trust. Next week, next Saturday, I'm leaving with 53 15-year-olds for an island in the Bahamas. <laughs> they have heard from me, and they will hear from me, that they have my trust until they earn my distrust. 
I will have bed checks. <laughs> they have my trust, but give trust with wisdom. Wisdom is a very important thing in teaching. And so give trust with wisdom. Smiling and trust are key things when you're dealing with, when you're dealing with children and when you're dealing with adults. In addition, I want you to think about the fact that they're just kids. Don't forget, these are just kids. They call them kids for a reason. They're going to mess up. By the way, are you still changing names? Okay, they're still employees. Uh, they're, they're still learning. They're still trainees. They're still patients. And we, got, we have to expect them to act that way. And so when they mess up, we may get angry. Never, ever discipline in anger. Never discipline in anger. Let me tell you that I have never made a good decision when I'm angry. Now, I'm not saying every bad decision I ever made was when I was angry. I, I had lots of reasonably wrong decisions, okay? But never discipline in anger. It just won't work. Don't let standardized tests turn you into standardized teachers. Be creative. Be creative. Create within the box. Um, and if you need to get out of that box, it's OK. But just remember it's there, because that standardization is the box. Be creative within that box. You know, they call teaching a practice. It's called a practice, because you've got to keep doing it over and over and over again. Don't forget to reflect. Always reflect on what you have been doing and what you did. Because if you don't, if you don't reflect, you will never learn the lessons of history. Those who do not learn the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. You've heard that. And last but not least, treat children. Don't forget to change the word. Treat children as you would like to be treated. Treat them as you would like to be treated. Because if you don't treat them like that, they will see right through you. And they will wonder why. You have a different standard for yourself than you do for them. 10 points. You know, I learned, I heard this in a very different way years ago. Um, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, um, people used to say, those who can do, those who can't teach. Turns out, I don't know if this is true or not, but I believed it. I believe Socrates said this, those who can do, those who understand, teach. It is my hope that today, all of you teachers who are moving from this room to your careers, to your lives as teachers, have a better understanding of what true, true teaching is. Because honestly, it is the best way to ever show you care. Thank you very much.